2011. The coast of South Holland in the Netherlands. One of the largest scientific field experiments in the world is taking shape here. The sand motor. The sand motor consists of 21.5 million cubic meters of sand. Waves, tides and the wind will spread this sand towards the beaches and dunes. The result is the sustainable strengthening of a considerable section of the coast of South Holland and the creation of a nature and recreational area that is constantly changing. This pilot is unique for coastal protection because of its size and location. As Rijkswaterstaat we used to nourish the coastline of the Netherlands every year. And what we did now was nourish in one specific location. A huge amount of sand and it's used for uh, coastal defenses, but also to protect us from sea level rise. Besides cultural protection, the knowledge we gain here is uh, very important. With all these data, we try to gain more knowledge over this specific pilot. And the other thing is that we would like to export our knowledge to other countries because it's also unique for the whole of the world. What is striking in this area is that the sand motor is really dynamic. What you can see is that it was made as a peninsula shaped uh, form and now it's stretched. Sand transportation has gone to the north and to the south, so it's a more stretched form now. For natural aspects is that you can see that different birds are coming to the sand motor and also seals are spotted. And uh, for the recreational aspect, you can see that a lot of kite surfers love to come here, especially during summer. Plants, animals and leisure visitors are finding their way to the sand motor. Scientists from a range of universities and research institutes are keeping a close eye on the changes in the sand motor. They are monitoring the currents, the distribution of sand, flora and fauna, bathing safety, dune development, groundwater, recreation and also the administrative implications of a project like the sand motor. The sand motor is being followed and monitored and evaluated in two phases of five years each. The first five year period will end in 2016 and the final evaluation will be done in 2021. We are very interested in the ecosystem development. Uh, so biotic research is one of our priorities. We also look on the ground, we look at the groundwater. And last but not least, the dune formation is a super interesting thing. Uh, vegetation uh, that develops there, we hope, can be unique. This laser vehicle scans the surface of the sand in a radius of 100 meters. The vehicle drives at a speed of 20 kilometers an hour along the beach. The laser takes a picture 100,000 times a second, showing how the sand has spread since the last measurement. Morphological research is conducted using this 40-meter-high Argus mast, which is fitted out with eight research cameras that take photographs every 30 minutes. Jet skis are also being used. Uh, we study the shape or the morphology of the sand motor uh, using topographic maps. Uh, we obtain these topographic maps uh, the first year every month uh, and the year after every two months uh, using jet ski and uh, quad bike. These techniques are uh, very useful in this environment because the sand motor, uh, well it has uh, specific and challenging environments such as here the intertidal zone which is uh, very big. We are uh, at the spit at the moment, before that we have the gully and uh, behind that uh, the lagoon and, uh, and the dune lake, of course. These topographic maps uh, give us an idea of how the morphology of the sand motor evolves and how the sand is distributed on uh, short and long time scales. Thanks. 
gefixeerd. Ja. Hij staat nu op 2000, dus dat is 3,50 meter, 3,60 meter en hij zit er precies op het punt. En de stroom zit ons nu weer weg. Simeon Moons is a doctorate student. He is looking at the animals living on the seabed such as shellfish, worms and other organisms. He works in a team with other researchers, comparing the species found on the seabed near the sand motor with other locations on the Dutch coast. So what we see here is the lagoon and this is an area that is sheltered uh, from the waves and also the current velocity is lower and this means small particles of sand can be deposited here uh, and that creates an environment where uh, different animals can occur which do not usually occur in this area. Yeah, this is a nice phenomenon. We see uh, here an, an algal mat that has been formed uh, in the summer probably and what you can see is uh, uh, beneath it is this layer of black, black sediment which is uh, anoxic and this is a uh, has a, has a really big influence on uh, the ecology, what, what animals can survive in this environment. Yeah, I measure the coordinates of uh, this little dune and draw it in a map so that I can compare the position uh, in different years. An important focus of sand motor studies is dune growth. The dunes have a range of roles to play. They protect the hinterland, but are also home to nature and recreation. Bas Arens is teaming up with people from the water company to study dune growth. And here's an example of two small dunes developed in two different plants. This is beach grass and this is marum grass. Our expectation was that the start of a dune always is in beach grass and then the dune gets higher and marum grass comes in and takes over. But as you can see here, both grasses are able to start the development of a dune from, from scratch. Research is looking at dune growth on the sand motor, but also the Soloveld nature area adjoining the coast behind the sand motor. We expected the sand motor to deliver a lot of sand into the dunes and therefore we installed uh, about 20 sand traps in different cross sections. And this is one of them. This is the most seaward sand trap on the fore dune. We also have salt spray meters. Because of the, the presence of the sand motor, the waves are very far from the shore here and the waves produce the, and the salt spray. And the result is that in the sections over there, at the narrow beach, the salt spray is much higher than at the sections just behind the sand motor. We expected to trap a lot of sand because of this very wide sand motor just in front of the sand traps. The amount of sand that's trapped here is very little and in the dunes, in the other traps, there's, there's virtually no sand at all. New habitats are being created on the sand motor, showing how nature goes its own way under the influence of the wind, tide, rain and sun. And that is also important for birds and other animals, like seals. Martin Baptiste is studying these marine mammals, mainly in the Wadden area. But the Delfland coast is also an important research terrain for him, because seals are happy to rest on the sand motor in the winter. Three, two. Yeah, hero, the volgende bordje. Yeah. We often uh, spot seals on the sand motor and we are very interested in uh, counting how many seals are using this, uh, this sand motor. Uh, we also involve the public in that. So if you see a, a seal lying on the sand motor, you can go to a website. In Dutch it's called waarneming.nl. You can write down the location and the time that you've seen this seal or this group of seals. Stormeel. 
The number of birds in the area of the sand motor is also monitored using observations by bird spotters, as well as a radar station in the dunes that counts bird numbers, but also monitors hydrodynamic features like currents and waves. This radar is originally placed here to measure the currents and the waves around the sand motor, but we installed an extra computer with special bird radar software, and we can also count the number of flying birds in a large distance, five kilometers over there, five kilometers over there. Okay, here the mooie vliegpad. After a year, we are going to analyze the data and to specially look for the differences in the number of birds that are present over the various seasons, and also the difference in the number of birds present on the sand motor and on the remaining part of the beach where there is no sand motor. The sand motor is a wild-like area. That means that, at low tide, people can go walking in some areas that are submerged at high tide. The sea currents have changed since the arrival of the sand motor. The life-saving services have now acquired extensive local experience, and leisure visitors are getting more used to the dynamic nature of the area. In the summer it's packed with people, children are playing and they don't realize it's a special type of beach along the coast of South Holland. In the last two years we learned a lot about the safety about this beach and especially this channel over here. In the beginning it was a very strong current and I'm glad this summer, last summer, it was not so strong anymore and the safety is increasing. Emergency services are making grateful use of a specially developed app that shows them the currents around the sand motor. The lifeguards, for example, using the app so they can see in the morning what the current will do in the afternoon. And you can see the current, you can see the sand banks and you can see also the weather. And that combination we're using to keep the safety on a high level. From the beginning we have uh, a special team, a quick response team um, that are volunteers of the lifeguard and when there are accidents along this type of beach they will respond immediately. The San Motor has become a popular destination for nature lovers and leisure visitors, including kite surfers. Chantal established her kite surfing school on the San Motor. We just have an amazing space, so you can see the wide beaches that are shaped the laguna from the sea, so it's fresh seawater. And uh, this is uh, uh, very low, so we can stand up in there with the student, and no stream and hardly any waves, so they have an easier lesson. If you want to have a session and like go flat water first, half an hour, and then you go and decide to go in the waves. Like today, there's not really much waves, but there are some days uh, the waves are awesome. So you have best of both worlds. So you can actually combine the, in one session. You have flat water and huge waves. Yeah, awesome. A scientific experiment for coastal defenses that also delivers a new nature and recreation area. Is this possible at several locations in the Netherlands? And perhaps even at several locations in the world? In any case, there is a great deal of interest from throughout the world in the results of this trial. Uh, the sand motor is of course an optimal solution for the local conditions observed here along the Delfland coast. In other places in the world, these conditions will be different. Therefore, I see much more in the approach where we start reasoning from a local coastal problem at another location in the world uh, where local stakeholders have their own aims and goals with that coast. And based on the concepts apply here, we try to come up with an alternative, innovative sandy strategy, uh, which makes use of the concepts applied here at the Dutch Sand Engine. Two years after the creation of the sand motor, visitors from home and abroad are arriving to enjoy the beach, the nature and the sea there is considerable enthusiasm for building with nature, not only in the Netherlands, but also in the rest of the world. 
we are continuing to monitor and study the sand motor to see how it develops. With the sand motor, the Netherlands is continuing to be innovative in water management by actually working with water instead of against it.